Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Bruce McPherson, Chairman of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. Welcome to our meeting of December 3rd, 2020 at 9 a.m. Uh, we thank Community TV for broadcasting this uh, in Santa Uh We appreciate that. Uh, please, uh, we'll start by uh, with a roll call. Commission Alternate Lynn. Here. Commissioner Gonzalez. Here. Commissioner Bator. Here. Commissioner McPherson. Here. Commissioner Leopold. Here. Commission Alternate Mulhern. Here. Here. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Here. Commissioner Caput. Here. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Present. Commissioner Johnson. I'm uh, in as alternate for Commissioner Johnson today. Okay, Here. Commission Alternate Tim. Present. Commissioner Brown. Here. And Commissioner Eads. Here. Very good. Thank you. It's nice to have everyone here. Um, all right, we'll go to item number two, oral communications. Uh, any member of the public may address the commission on items that are not already on the agenda. We will have a limit of three minutes uh, to speak. Uh, is there anyone that would like to address us under oral communications on items that are not on the agenda? We don't have anyone. Sorry, Commissioner, I was on mute. We have um, Donna Murphy. We have quite a few hands up. Oh, excuse me. Okay, go ahead. Maybe, how many do we have? Um, so far, six. Okay, well, if we can limit that to two minutes, then that would be great. Thank you. Ms. Murphy? Donna Murphy? Good morning. This is not Donna Murphy, this is Mark from City Miller, but I am using her account. Good morning, <laughs> commissioners. Um, I just wanted to uh, take a moment to thank three members of the commission who will, for whom this will be their last meeting. Uh, Commissioner Trina Kaufman Gomez, Commissioner John Leopold, and Commissioner Ed Botroff. I just wanna thank each of you for your uh, years of outstanding service uh, on behalf of our entire county and looking out for the transportation needs of everybody. And, uh, and I wish you all the, I wish you all well. I, I, the best of the very best of luck to you. I also wanted to thank uh, this take this opportunity to thank the RTC staff, the Metro staff, and Caltrans staff who all jointly worked together so hard to put the Transit Corridor Alternative Analysis Regional uh, Rail Network Integration Study out. And I really was impressed with the body of work. And thank you all for your hard work. Um, I noticed that there were a number of benefits uh, attributed to the, the locally preferred alternative, but three important ones were missing. One is that the rail will protect 100% of the existing right of way and allow completion of the rail trail ASAP. Uh, the second thing is that rail will generate 29% more permanent jobs and 22% more construction jobs than the BRT option. And finally, on average, rail will be about four times safer than bus on the corridor. So thank you all for your for your time and energy this morning and thank you for the opportunity to address you. Uh, Sally Arnold. There, am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm Sally Arnold. I'm the board chair for Santa Cruz County Friends of the Rail and Trail. Um, and I just want to uh, draw your attention to the public comments that were received last month regarding the TCAA. Since the comments were only posted yesterday late afternoon, you may not have had a chance to read them yet. And um, honestly, in the few hours we've had, I've had them, we've really been zipping through them as fast as we can. But I have to say that um, our initial review found that over 250 people wrote to the RTC on the topic of the TCAA. And well over 80% of them were pro rail service only one percent we can only find three people who spoke who wrote in favor of bus service um and so i think it's very clear that the community strongly favors the staff 
uh, recommended locally preferred alternative. And um, I urge you to put a little, uh, you know, brow spend a little time browsing the comments. Some of them were really quite moving and very specific about ways in which uh, rail transit would have helped people with their commutes um, had they had it, um, you know, if, if, if it were available for them. So uh, thank you very much. And um, I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, seeing uh, seeing this project move forward, and again, I want to echo Mark's comments about thanking the thanking the outgoing commissioners for their fabulous work um, on not just the rail and trail, but many of the uh, transit projects that our county needs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Saint Michael Saint. Uh, good morning, commissioners and staff. Transportation. Uh, a few of us attended the California Transportation Commission meeting yesterday on the funding. Congratulations for that. I'd like to uh, share with you my comments uh, that I gave last uh, yesterday to the Transportation Commission. Uh, for the last four years, I've been advocating with my fellow advocates and asking our Regional Transportation Commission to pursue robust mass transit system for our county. Uh, this has fallen on deaf ears. The consistent opposition to changing course from single occupancy vehicles to mass transit <clears throat> is the imaginary view that voters want highway widening and that this will get Santa Cruz moving again by relieving congestion. This is a false assertion on two counts. First, the voters were fooled into voting for Measure D because of a false pretense that highway widening will relieve congestion. Many experts and even members of the RTC know that widening the highway will fail in the long term. We will have spent nearly $250 million of taxpayers' money for nothing. Secondly, this Measure D passed by approximately 2,500 votes out of 132,000 cast. This is in no way a voter mandate, although it did pass, but only because of the other pieces of Measure D had good options to help our county become uh, safer and more greener. That is what passed Measure D. I continually hear from our constituents that only voted for Measure D because of those options I previously listed, which are walking, biking, rail trail, pedestrian safety. At what point in time do we shift to more sustainable transportation system? The widening of highways does not work. If this ox lane project is funded, we delay our mitigation efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and vehicle mile travels for decades. We feel that our Regional Transportation Commission and Caltrans is failing us when it continues to fund projects for single occupancy vehicles. They both fail to recognize the urgency in mitigating the effects of climate change. The old school mentality of highway widening is actually contributing to global warming. We urge you to not fund this Ox Lane project as planned. An alternate funding scenario of dedicated bus on shoulder would start us in the right direction of a much more sustainable transportation system. Thank you for your time. Happy holidays. And also, all my best to those commissioners that are uh, going to be leaving us soon. Have a good day. Uh, Mr. Ben Fernasa. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. You've got the material I sent everybody, uh, which is a deep dive into the ordinance. I want to tell you, I think where we are, where you are, is you're circling the drain, meaning that in the future, unless you decide whether you're going to have a train or a trail, you're going to be in this quagmire. So let's assume that you want the train. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you have to recite the findings of necessity. And second of all, you have to get eight out of the 12 members to vote for the train. Otherwise you can't because the measure revenues do not include funding for any new train or rail service. And that's the only way you can amend it. Okay, let's say you don't want the train. You want a trail, what can you do? At the next meeting, you can vote to stop supporting the research on a train. Let's say that's 4% of the 8% that goes. And you can transfer that to the trail. So now the trail has instead of 17%, 21%.
At the same time, you can vote with a majority. You don't need two thirds, you just need a majority. You can vote to rail ban. And that, you know, that the train is only mentioned twice in the ordinance. Once, no funding, and second, for uh, to get a preserve the rain op the, the rail option. And what that means is rail benching. So in order to stop the drain from draining, you need a stopper to go in one direction. So you got to do one of those two things and you can do it in the next three months, not the next five years. We've been five years into this. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Keith Otto. Yeah, and um, uh, Ms. Bart, could you pull up the slides that I sent in? And yeah. can everybody hear me okay? Quick sound check. No. Thank you. Great, and if you could go to the next slide with the reduced time. So Keith Otto, county resident, uh, a couple comments with regards to the transit corridor alternatives analysis, the draft report. Um, in particular, I'm gonna talk about uh, ridership. So ridership can be quoted as users or boardings, right? One commuter would be two boardings per day, a boarding to go to work, a second boarding to return home. So again, one, user two boardings. The Unified Corridor study was very clear on this, 3,500 users, 7,000 boardings per day. It stated it just that way. It also referenced 100,000 users on Highway 1 each day, so an incredibly small number of people would use a train. So what does the new TCAA report tell us? Are those ridership numbers users or boardings? In fact, you won't find the word boardings at all in the report, at least I couldn't find it. I asked staff and the number is in fact boardings, not users. So if we want to look at the number of users for the train, we divide those numbers by two and that's what I show here. So the upper end of the ridership estimates for each of the train options is now even less than the small number for, from the UCIS and some of the options, it's much, much less, but that's not all. Next slide, please. The UCIS forecast year was for 2035 and the TCAA forecast year is 2040. So the new information is that if we look out even farther into the future, we're gonna see very, very, very few riders. And then one more thing, um, if you could go to the next slide now, please. Consider Sonoma Marin area rail transit. So Sonoma and Marin have a population of almost three times Santa Cruz County, and they've never had a weekday ridership of even 2,000 users. So what's the bottom line here? I and many support public transit, but a train in Santa Cruz County is not the way to go. It's not going to have ridership for it to be a good investment. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time this morning. Uh, Mr. Kerry Pico. Please have the PowerPoint. Oops. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, can you see my PowerPoint? Give me one second. Everybody knows I love doing PowerPoint and I want everybody to pay attention to the numbers except for Mr. McPherson because I know his staff looks into the numbers very well. So uh, this is just a, a plot of how each study reports the, the cost of the train over 30 years. The first study was 526, I've added in the operation cost. The next study went up by 350 million to 870 million. And the next study went up to $1.2 billion. 
And so it says that each new study brings it up by 350. Maybe we'll get to a realistic number, but realistically, the realistic number is closer to the 1.2 billion. So uh, next slide, please. And so I've repeated this, but I've also showed the different kind of studies that were out there before the 2015 study, which quite honestly, in my opinion, did everything it could to underscore, uh, to make the cost look cheaper. Uh, this was my analysis using the 2015 study of all their comparable trains, and I came to a $1.1 billion. Uh, the MPIS, which was done in 1998, was $1.0 billion, and then the last one, the TCAA, is $1.2 billion. By the way, these are all inflation-adjusted numbers. Next slide. And I'm sorry, I have to speed it up. I've got two minutes. So now let's talk about the trail. Well, the trail, we're trying to sell it as a cheap thing. So it came to 1.153 million by the first estimate. Then the second estimate brought it up to 301 uh, million. And then my personal estimate, because of the uh, the, tra the trail doesn't include the, ex mass the excavation that really will uh, be realistically uh, incurred when you go to places where the, the hills are undulating and difficult and need retaining walls. I put it closer to 400 million and actually maybe even up to 500 million. Next slide. I'm getting to the end, which is the RTC studies, once the corridor was owned, appeared to be unrealistically rosy causing for public outcry for a new study, at least those who were skeptical of the results, which included me. And the result was the cost of the train doubled. By the way, what I didn't get to point out was each of those studies, at the end, the cost was double the 2015 amount. I couldn't see it because somehow I have something blanked out on my screen. The cost of the trail doubled, the county faces. Uh, so if you want to build them both, You've got a $1.5 billion rail trail package that you can't afford. You'll have people saying, oh, gee whiz, SB1 will pay for it all. I want to point out that Smart Train itself only gets 38% of its operating cost. And um, and I guess uh, I, you, you pulled the screen away, but uh, the last thing I want to say is, um, you know, the RTC should step back, determine what it can afford on the corridor, understanding that a hundred million dollar limit in funds for the trail i should have put and so my attitude is stop wasting public money let's get realistic and stop moving forward on things you can't afford thank you uh uh johanna lighthill Joe. There we go. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, thanks, commissioners, for considering my comments. Um, I can see that over the next couple of months, you'll be inundated with data and opinions about the TCAA. Today, I don't want to comment on what's in the TCAA, but rather than what is not in the TCAA. Um, the study has been done before, at least one similar. As Mr. Pico just mentioned, the 1998 uh, major transportation investment study uh, was completed by the RTC. It too evaluated a list of transit alternatives on the corridor as well as Highway 1. And uh, the study is mentioned in the TCA on page 16, but its conclusions are not addressed. Uh, the MPIS consultants recommended a, com a, a combined bikeway and a busway. In, in fact, um, the bus route in the MTIS is very similar to the BRT route in the TCAA. Also recommended in the MTIS short term was weekend recreational rail service to test the market for future possibilities and one that required minimal investment costs. In 2003, the RTC investigated recreational rail options and proposed the village cruiser a weekend trolley to run between Capitol and Aptos. It is mentioned, by the way, that in 2002, staff and consultants discussed Prop 116 requirements with CTC, and it was stated that even a limited excursion service may be sufficient to access 
the Prop 116 funds. So I couldn't find uh, a final EIR on the project. So I'm assuming that it didn't get that far, but the 2005 draft included suggestions for noise mitigating techniques, such as providing nearby homes with dual pane windows and insulation. So I'm assuming it didn't, wasn't received well. Of course, we see the project was never implemented, nor was it discussed why in the TCAA. So finally, the bus was recommended, but not implemented. Recreational rail was recommended, but not implemented. We didn't get to test the rail market, but now the commission seems faced with an all or nothing project. I hope that you'll look back and consider past studies, public sentiment, and the strong desire for an adequate trail as you move forward and evaluate the, the data in the TCAA and before ultimately you make your decision. Thank you for your consideration. Mr. Barry Scott. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanna first thank uh, the commissioners who are, are terming out for their, their service. You'll be missed and your work is appreciated. I want to uh, congratulate the RTC staff for the $107.2 million grant uh, package of, of uh, uh, that will fund uh, improvements on, on really all three corridors, I think. And then I want to speak to the, the TCAA and, and point out that, you know, we build infrastructure in, in advance of future needs, not past needs or even current needs. And all, all, of the, all of the data relating to climate change indicates we need more active transportation and much more public transit. Uh, robo cars and this kind of technological, uh, what are called improvements by an automobile sector are not really improvements at all. They don't, they don't come close to providing what public transit provides. And connecting to, to Watsonville is of paramount importance. What, what we need is to improve our Metro, support our Metro. We need our coastal rail trail. And all of us, and especially South County, deserve some kind of transit on a dedicated rail line. Um, my neighbors who are concerned about costs conveniently use the worst case scenario price packages for large commuter rail or diesel multiple unit systems. They talk about the smart train, a 79 mile an hour, really comparatively huge system that doesn't really, in my opinion, belong here. We have never yet received a, any kind of a proposal that might be for light battery electric streetcars that, you know, that enjoy high capacity, and can connect to uh, Watsonville. You know, it's not a either or trail or rail, and it's not an either or trail or bus. What we need to do is go for all of the above. We may not get everything that we ask for, but we should try. And again, congratulations to the RTC staff and thanks to those commissioners who are, who are leading us. Thank you. Commissioner McPherson, that was the last comment. You're on mute. Yeah, got it, got it. I'm back, okay. Um, we, we will go to item number three. Uh, are there any additions or deletions to the consent or regular agendas by the commission? Um, there is only uh, replacement pages for item 21 and a handout for item 19. Okay. Very well, okay, and I think we should, everybody should have gotten those on the commission. Um, we will move now to uh, the consent agenda, agenda that begins with the minutes on item number four through item number uh, 16. Uh, is there anybody who would like to pull any or comment on anything briefly on the consent agenda or pull it? Are there any comments from the public on any items that are on the consent agenda? We have two comments. Okay. Uh, Ms. Arnold. Hi, 
Sally Arnold again, Friends of the Rail and Trail. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, Friends of the Rail and Trail support both items six and seven on the consent agenda. The RTC and Federal Highways Administration Central Federal Lands Agreement, an amendment for the North Tro Coast Trail Project. So of course we're you know supportive of getting that North Coast Trail Project going as fast as we can. And number seven, Santa Cruz County Regional Conservation Investment Strategy Update, an amendment to the agreements. Um, we also, of course, support anything that's going to be uh, uh, moving those things along. So we wanted to thank you very much, and uh, and we hope that you will, of course, adopt both numbers six and seven on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brian Peoples. Yeah, hi, this is Brian. Can you uh, share my slide? It's Brian Peoples with Trail Now. Uh, the tr North Coast Rail Trail is an important recreational trail for our community. Um, recent cost increases are very concerning, especially when because of the, it could result in the loss of the federal grant funds. And the RTC needs to prevent this loss. Um, building the trail next to the tracks costs millions more than a simple trail building the trail uh, along the tracks. This is millions more is a reason we may lose the federal grant that cost increases. The photo that you see here is uh, Congressman uh, Jimmy Panetta with the North Coast Farmers, uh, where Jimmy and farmers are located. They're on the hayride, and that's actually where the trail is supposed to go, the proposed trail. You can see the, the trail will destroy a significant amount of farmland. Um, meanwhile, on the right, you see the old tracks that are mostly buried and unused and being reserved for a commuter train. Um, the cost of building a trail where the tracks are located is millions of dollars less than building a trail through the farmland. The EIR report showed that there was no difference in uh, the two options of a trail through the through the farmland or, a, or the trail where the tracks are. The difference actually, one of the things that the EIR called out was they called the, the track historical. Now, the, the, no historical society said that, that it was historical. Um, and the EIR actually said that that would not prevent the removal of the tracks. Um, removal of the tracks um, is uh, very common. And sometimes what you find very often is a contamination of heavy metals and arsenic. Um, so the cost of doing that site remediation actually would not be more expensive than, build, than building the trail next to the tracks. It's very common. And what's interesting is that we're building a trail. And if, if we truly do have arsenic and metal in the tracks, uh, we should probably remove that. Um, Panettas uh, and the farmers clearly, um, it's illogical to be building a trail in the farmland rather than where the old tracks are. Uh, there's no reason to keep the old tracks, uh, but now there is a reason to pull the tracks. So we don't lose the federal grant. We're going to lose the federal grant funds because the price continues to escalate. We're asking the RTC to change directions. Um, we need to change directions. Now, nobody should claim that our design is already complete because when we do construction, when you do manufacturing of any sort, design is less than 1% of actual cost. So, and also the project is delayed to 2025. So we absolutely need to move forward and change directions. And oh, by the way, I saw Jimmy the other, uh, not too long ago, and Jimmy's response was he's watching this. Um, Jimmy, of course, gets all of our newsletters and our emails. Um, we know Jimmy. So the, you're being watched, we're being watched, and we're asking you to be disciplined with our funds. We don't need a commuter train to Davenport. Thank you. Those were the last of the comments, Commissioner. I would move the consent agenda. All right, it's been moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. 
Please call the roll. Can I make one comment? And that is on the North Coast Rail Trail. The surest way to lose the federal grant is to change the project at this point. So I think it's clear and the commission is very aware of all the issues that it's been dealing with to get this far. And we're very close to going before the Coastal Commission to get a consistency determination. And this is the project that's been through the EIR and has been approved. To change it at this point would be essentially to lose the federal money. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the consent agenda. Please call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commission Alternate Tim? We get that, aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. And Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. That's unanimous. You passed it unanimously. We will move on to the regular agenda. Item number 17, Commissioner Reports. Any oral reports? And I just, we're going to hear from our Executive Director in just a moment, and he'll get into more detail on the grant that was just awarded by the California Transportation Commission yesterday, which is phenomenal. And just, there's going to be some nice words that deservedly so for these three retiring commissioners. But any other oral commission reports, Mr. Mulhern? Thank you, Chair. I don't want to steal any of Mr. Preston's thunder on the CTC grant, but I want to extend my highest praise to Guy and his team for securing this grant. And for really, I guess, converting on the promise of the UCIS. The reason I supported the UCIS was because having a corridor study in place made the RTC eligible for a new grant that was enacted under SB1, the Solutions for Congested Corridors Program. It was a huge pot of money. And we were one of the few agencies that were going to be eligible because we had a corridor study. He jumped right on top of that, organized his people, and went through the application process with CTC staff and delivered an incredible multimodal project that is going to provide all of the features that we look for in our transportation infrastructure development these days. It provides a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, vehicle miles traveled. It provides that important alternative to single occupancy vehicles with five miles of buffered or protected bike lanes on Soquel, two pedestrian and bicycle overcrossings over Highway 1. And then, of course, bus on shoulder, which is novel in California, where I think the only agency that's going to be delivering that sort of project in the state of California. It's just all around just a stellar reckoning for the RTC. And I'm glad to see all of our work coming into fruition. I'm sorry. I also want to make the point that although it includes some highway work and road work and cars are going to benefit, the real benefactors of this project are going to be the beneficiaries, rather, of this project are going to be transit users, especially in South County. We're going to have dedicated bus on shoulder lanes. We're going to have transit signal priority at over 20 signals along Soquel. So the buses will have priority when they go through those intersections. It's just amazing. This is some 21st century infrastructure development. So thank you very much, everyone, for all of your work in getting this done. Any other commissioner comments? Chair, would this be an appropriate time to say something or as some remarks about my tenure on there? Or is there going to be something later? Yeah, Mr. Preston is going to mention all three of the retirees, so to speak. Then I'll wait. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just want to, well, I can't overemphasize the 
the great work that our staff did that needs to be recognized. Uh, Mr. Preston will be soon talking about the grants, but uh, what a phenomenal teamwork effort it was and to meet the objectives of this commission when we set out uh, Measure D and to try to alleviate the traffic situation throughout Santa Cruz County. Uh, very, but very well said, uh, Patrick. Uh, are there any other oral reports from commissioners? I see none. Uh, we will move to item number 18, and that is the election of the 2020 RTC chair and vice chair. Um, I will give this report. We had a subcommittee, and uh, we have recommended that I'll get right to the point that the vice chair, Rio Rodriguez of Watsonville, be uh, uh, the Watsonville City Council, uh, be uh, named chair for 2021. And that uh, Santa Cruz City Councilwoman uh, Sandy Brown be the vice chair. Now this is a little different. We usually go city, county, city, county, but when uh, it was, I think Cynthia Chase left and it was Santa Cruz City's turn to be chair, uh, that was uh, pushed over to be Mr. Bottorf last year. And so we think that uh, the committee thought it was correct to have, even though it's two city representatives, to let Santa Cruz City have its representation on the chairmanship of the uh, commission. Um, and so we recommend that uh, Rio Rodriguez be the chair and Gonzalez. Sandy Brown. Oh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Oh, Gonzalez. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, did I say that again? Gosh darn it, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'll just say that Aurelio be chair and that Sandy Brown be vice chair. And I would open it up to any other comments of people who might be interested in recommending someone else to one of those positions. Are there any other recommendations? Yes. I, I'm, I'm ready to move for that before uh, I, I retire out, but um, I'll wait for comment. Okay. Does anybody else have a comment? We see none. Okay, I think Ms. Kaufman Gomez would like to make a motion to, uh, well, you make the motion uh, for Mr. Gonzalez and uh, Ms. Brown, please. Yes, I so move the chair to be Aurelio and the vice chair to be Sandy Brown. Thank you. Second. Second by Schifrin. Uh, we'll call the roll. Mission alternate oh, Are there any community uh, comments? Maybe we should have that on this as well. No, no community. We don't have any comments, Commissioner. Okay. Commissioner. All right, please call the roll. Uh, uh, Aye. Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Mulhern? <laughs> Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Caput? Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Commission Alternate Tim? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, and congratulations to each of you. And have a great holiday season because 2021 is coming up <laughs> on you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Gonzalez, Ms. Brown. Um, now we will go to item number uh, 19, the director's report from our uh, executive director, Guy Preston. Thank you, Chair McPherson and commissioners. Um, I have a few announcements. Um, starting with uh, RTC and the city of Santa Cruz will be hosting a virtual ribbon cutting for segment seven, phase one of the coastal rail trail on December 10th from 1230 to one o'clock via Zoom. The City of Santa Cruz website um, has information on how to attend, and I have a link on my director's report to that. Um, my next announcement is regarding Highway 9. Um, Supervisor Bruce McPherson's office um, will host a virtual public meeting on Wednesday, December 16th from 5.30 to 7. Caltrans will update the public on two of their recently completed project initiation documents, or PIDs including their safety PID for bicycle and pedestrian access from Graham Hill Road to the San Lorenzo Valley School Complex along Highway 9, as well as their highway striping PID for work throughout the San Lorenzo Valley. There will also be another meeting, I believe it's actually going to be in March 2021, to discuss Caltrans Highway 9 Capital Maintenance PID and the Complete Streets PID. 
please visit RTC's website for more information on those meetings. Um, there's a link on my uh, director's report and it's on the Highway 9 page. Uh, and then the big announcement of the day, of course, is the Watsonville to Santa Cruz Multimodal Corridor Project. And uh, this is for Highway 1 and Soquel Drive improvements. And the grant recommendation is now a grant um, award. On November 16, 2020, yesterday, late um, about 5.30 p.m., the California Transportation Commission staff um, uh, our, our commission actually approved staff's recommendation for $107.2 million in funding for the RTC's $150.6 million Wattsville to Santa Cruz Multimodal Corridor Program, um, the Cycle 2 project. The CTC adopted the recommendation on December uh, 2nd, like I said, last night. Um, uh, um, and um, in attendance was um, uh, Chair McPherson and also Supervisor Friend, who spoke on behalf of the project. And I want to thank both commissioners for their support. Um, it was uh, uh, very much appreciated by uh, Executive Director uh, Mitch Weiss. Uh, he contacted me after the meeting and said we really um, did a good, great job as a team and, and delivering our message to the commissioners. I also want to um, thank CTC Commissioner um, Carl um, Gardino, who um, talked about Measure D and, and the passage of Measure D and how the program of projects that we submitted was very much consistent with our, our sales tax measure and, and um, the consensus that we build in passing that. The project itself integrates and improves infrastructure for transit, active transportation, and local roadway highway modes of travel. The project provides transportation options for everyone, including our disadvantaged communities, and will significantly benefit the region's economy. The project will de decrease congestion with increased throughput while reducing vehicle miles traveled and creating a safer and more sustainable community. The project includes safety and operational improvements on Highway 1, including the first 5.75 miles of an ultimate seven and a half mile hybrid bus on shoulder auxiliary lane facility. Three sets of auxiliary lanes will be constructed between Soquel Drive and State Park Drive and transit buses will be permitted to ride on the shoulders at intersection locations to bypass traffic. The project also includes two new active transportation bridges at Chanticleer Avenue and Mar Vista Drive, as well as a bridge replacement at Capitola Avenue with sidewalks and bike lanes. And I want to mention that that um, replacement of the Capitola Avenue bridge is pretty important. You know, those abutments currently block our shoulders. We don't have continuous shoulders, which is why um, the uh, uh, interim idea of actually using our existing shoulders for buses will not work. And um, we worked with Caltrans and CHP and Metro very closely in coming up with the hybrid approach, which actually utilizes the auxiliary lanes, which help draw traffic off of the local streets, making them safer for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, it does create a little bit more capacity on the highway and traffic will be diverted off of local streets onto that highway. So that's diverted traffic, not induced traffic. The project also includes complete street improvements for Soquel Avenue Drive between La, La, La Fonda Avenue near Harbor High School to State Park Drive in Aptos. The roadway will receive a cape seal of the pavement for 5.6 miles and then will be reconfigured with over five miles of buffered and protected bike lanes, 46 green bike boxes for left turn movements, sidewalk gap closures, 100 ADA ramps, 96 crosswalk upgrades, and crosswalk warning devices at 10 mid-block locations. Adaptive signal control will be ins installed at 23 intersections with bus transit prioritization. RTC is working with Caltrans, Santa Cruz Metro, and the county to deliver the project improvements. The county is the lead agency in the implementation of the Soquel Avenue Drive multimodal improvements. The Highway 1 improvements will be constructed by Caltrans with RTC implementing environmental clearance and final design. A grant of this magnitude demonstrates the power of Measure D and leveraging additional funding. It also validates years of effective planning, especially in the 
uh, with the inclusion of a sustainable community strategy within our regional transportation plan and the adoption of the unified corridor investment study, which served as our required multimodal corridor plan. And let me say, it was very compelling to be able to make the argument that this plan was approved 12-0 by this board. It meant a lot to the commission and it showed that we had significant community input in developing the plan that we placed in front of them. SB1 funding for construction was programmed in fiscal years 22 and 23 with 92.8 million coming from the Solutions to Congested Corridor Program and 14.4 million from the Competitive Local Partnership Program. Staff work with this partner, will be working with this partners to adjust the schedules to match programming. I anticipate that all components of the project will be under construction by 2023. Staff will provide regular updates on the delivery of this transformative project at subsequent meetings. I have one of those updates right now. The Highway 1 Improvement Project State Park to Bay Porter, the release of the draft environmental impact report. We released that for public comment um, and the 45 day review period started on January 11th, 2021. Uh, well, it started uh, a while back and will be completed on January 11th, 2021. A virtual public hearing will be held on December 8th from 5 to 6.30 to provide the public with the opportunity to learn more about the project and submit comments before a final design is selected. More information can be found on the RTC website and I've provided a link there. And then uh, earlier this week, um, a bipartisan group of members of Congress unveiled the framework for a $908 billion emergency relief proposal designed to carry the US through March 31st, 2021. The text of the bill is still being finalized, but the bipartisan coalition says it will include $45 billion for transit, airlines, airports, buses, and Amtrak, including $15 billion for mass transit, $1 billion for Amtrak, and $8 billion for buses and the motor coach industry. How the transit funds will be distributed has not been finalized. The transit industry has been requesting at least $32 billion in emergency relief as the combined impacts of the pandemic have left public transit systems across the United States struggling. The proposal also includes financial relief for states, local and tribal governments, students, small businesses, healthcare, low-income and minority communities, the unemployed, among others. The framework is re retroactive to December 1st and, and will extend to March 31st, which gives Congress a few weeks to nail down the details on the proposed legislation and potentially pass a piece of legislation. With that, I'd like to um, remind the commissioners and the public, you've already heard that there, this is the last meeting for three of our commissioners. Um, and um, you know we are a family here at RTC and, and each of the commissioners mean a lot to us. Um, I'd like to start actually with, um, uh, can you uh, move down to uh, Commissioner Trina Kaufman Gomez? I'm gonna go in uh, the order of service. Um, Trina, um, uh, Kaufman Gomez, um, 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 we are going to give her recognition for her two years of outstanding dedication and public service with the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. Thank you for your support for the Unified Corridor Investment Study, the Transit Corridor Alternatives Analysis, and your dedication to transportation in Santa Cruz County. Um, personally, Trina and I have had a very close connection um, she is very um, uh, dedicated to the, the work she does here. She contacts me regularly regarding questions she has on our agenda packages. And just um, when she sees a transportation issue of interest, she makes sure she calls it to my attention. Um, she's been absolutely wonderful to work with and um, a, a great commissioner to support um, um, all of the programs that we've been moving forward with. Um, now, if we can move on to Commissioner Bator. In recognition for your five years of outstanding dedication and public service with the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission, you have built inclusive coalitions and garnered support to pass Measure D, your support for the Unified Corridor Investment Study and the Transit Corridor Alternatives Analysis, as well as your leadership 
and guiding a strong partnership with the Santa Cruz Metro um, has been very important to this commission. Um, for you, those of you who do not know, um, uh, Commissioner Bottorf was my very first chair. And so um, I spent quite a bit of time uh, working with Ed and, and he helped me immensely in learning the ins and outs of, of being a, an executive director for the commission. And I really appreciate the time that Commissioner Bottorf spent with me. And finally, but not last, um, but not least, um, Commissioner John Leopold. In recognition of 12 years of tireless dedication to improving transportation in Santa Cruz County as a commissioner and sometimes as the chair of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission, demonstrated, demonstrating focused leadership in the reshaping of the Regional Transportation Plan to include the triple bottom line analysis of economy, environment, and equity, superb advocacy with the California Transportation Commission to secure funding for the purchase of the Santa Cruz branch rail line and local repair throughout the county. Devoted engagement to help develop the coastal rail trail, secure its funding and ensure its implementation. Resolute efforts to help craft Measure D, a 30 year transportation improvement package and build an inclusive community coalition to ensure its passage. Indeed, a monumental achievement. For those of you who do not know, John Leopold is the person who offered me my job. So um, for, for all of those people who wanna cast blame in the future, the reason why I am here is because John picked up the phone and called me and offered me this position. I know it was a, 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 a decision by, by all commissioners, but it means a lot to me that John was the one who called me and offered me the position he, and saw the excitement in my voice when I accepted the position. And I really thank John for uh, the leadership he showed um, in, in, uh, in the search for the new executive director and um, for the confidence that he placed in me. I know that many people, many commissioners would like to make comments regarding the outgoing commissioners and this would be the time to do so. Thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Preston. And I'll be the first one online to take the license as uh, chair uh, as outgoing chair as it is, uh, to uh, say what a privilege it has been to work with these three commissioners throughout the years. Um, each of them have been the, really a delight to work with, uh, sometimes having different opinions and all, and that's what we're all about. Uh, it's a very controversial uh, issue at times, transportation is. But I, I, uh, just to say a few comments about each, uh, with Katrina Kaufman Gomez, uh, she is just so detailed in her analysis and the budgeting and what she does and she's always watching out uh, for the whole system but really uh, as, as can be expected for what has a, a, a substantial impact in the Watsonville area itself. Um, I also have been able to serve at times with uh, for over some time with her on AMBAG that it is related with uh, uh, has a relation with uh, transportation and housing issues in particular. She is just as ambitious and detailed and uh, focused on issues there as she has been on the commission. And I know that that holds true for her long-term service on the Watsonville City Council. Uh, it has been a delight to be able to get to know her better in our trips over and uh, back to Monterey County to Ambeg or to here on the, uh, to be on the commission. And I truly appreciate the services that you have provided uh, even with your granddaughter in, uh, in arms and all that, it uh, is a delight to see that. It gives us some nice uh, levity at times. Uh, Mr. Bottorf has been, uh, well, he preceded me as chair and uh, just stepped in when uh, Cynthia Chase at Santa Cruz was unable to do so a couple of years ago. Uh, she moved, but I have, um, there's uh, a lot of really uh, good memories that I have uh, with him and discussing the details of the agenda over the years. Uh, at Gilda's for a long time uh, on uh, the Friday before uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the meetings, uh, whether it be Metro or uh, the RTC. Uh, but there's uh, one thing that really uh, was uh, impressive to me. We made some trips, uh, have made some, did not this year. But I don't know when we will again uh, to Washington, D.C. to talk to our congressional representatives and senators. And uh, he was always at the front of the line, uh, knew how to, uh, you know, what, what rang the bell, so to speak, of those uh, legislators and helped us in getting some grants and some just general attention that's uh, ongoing in Washington, D.C. 
uh, as well as in Sacramento and uh, very, very uh, distinguished spokesman for the Regional Transportation Commission in those events as he has been at our commission meetings. And John Leopold, um, I've had the real pleasure of serving with him on the County Board of Supervisors, of course. Uh, I don't know anybody who's ever worked harder uh, for his district or for his cause, but the one thing that I remember in particular is the Measure D. Um, and we were, for two years, we discussed what should be as members of the campaign committee representing this commissioner of the county, uh, what needs to be done? And the, the beauty of that was that it was all inclusive. We had all modes of transportation and that's principally why we got the grant. We, it was just announced today uh, or yesterday by the California Transportation Commission. Believe me, John was at the front of the line. Uh, it took a lot of time to get the right uh, mix and match on Measure D. And that is uh, going to be a, it's a 30 year uh, measure that's going to be a benefit to all of us. And we owe a great deal of gratitude to, for, to John Leopold on that. And I'm just focusing on Measure D and transportation, but he did so much for his first district, um, uh, the Wetland Parks, roads, whatever the case may be, but um, really a detailed person and a hard worker. And uh, uh, it's been nice to, to work with him on the Measure D campaign in particular. And I know that some other members of the commission would like to have some comments. Um, please open up and uh, who would like to make comments? Aurelio? Thank you, Chair. I just want to keep, I'm going to keep it brief. Um, first, I uh, want to thank you all for your service. Uh, it's, a, it's a great privilege serving next to you folks, uh, especially Trina uh, with all her details, uh, uh, City Council and RTC and Metro. Uh, we had plenty of time in between commuting together from Watsonville to the Metro uh, meetings when we were in person. So uh, I got a lot of a lot of education and those trips. So I thank you for that, for that information that you divulged with me. Uh, and Ed and, and John, I appreciate your service to the community and to the city of Watsonville and, and always looking out for everyone's interest in transportation and the need to improve it for within our county and our region. Um, and I thank you and I, and I look forward to being uh, the chair, uh, it'll be a, a first for me. So uh, be patient with me. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? I know there's a lot there. Each of you would like to say something. Uh, you don't all have to say something. Uh, Sandy, did you, you want to say something? Oh, um, yeah, Mr. Schiffman. Um, very briefly, I don't want to repeat what other people have said, but I want to thank Trina for all her questions and really looking into subjects um, and issues very deeply and, you know, responding in a way that um, was quite knowledgeable. Um, so I appreciated your work, Trina, on the, on the commission. Um, it, it's been a pleasure to work with Ed uh, during his time. Uh, always, I, what I remember is the positive attitude that you had and the sense of humor that you brought to uh, sometimes fairly humor, humorless issues. Um, finally, I want to talk about John. I've known John for decades. Um, I was actually at his wedding um, many, uh, not that many, but many years ago. Um, and uh, a the, the one issue that hasn't been men mentioned that's transportation related is his work on the acquisition of the rail line. I don't think we would, current, we would, we would own the rail line now if it wasn't for John's perseverance, hard work, um, just really dedication to getting that line um, um, acquired. Now that we have it, we have all sorts of debates about what we should do with it, but it was no fate. It was not uh, something to be taken for granted. Uh, Union Pacific was not an easy uh, seller to deal with. And uh, I think the commission at times was ready to just throw up their hand, hands and say, forget about it. But John hung in there with them, hung in there with the commission, hung in there with the CTC and really advocated at the CTC, CTC. So John, um, I really want to thank you for, uh, for, for that contribution. Good. Any other commissioners would like to speak? Uh, Ms. Brown? 
I'll, I'll be quick. Um, yeah, I just, I, I agree with all of the comments that have been made about uh, these three uh, commissioners, uh, you know, attention to detail, uh, thoughtfulness, leadership. Um, so I won't repeat those, but I do want to say that I, um, you know, when I came to the commission, I, you know, I, I didn't, this was my first foray into transportation related policy and uh, budgeting. And I have learned so much from all of you and, um, you know, just really, really um, inspired and, um, you know, have a lot of respect for the work you've done and, um, you know, all of the things that others have said, ditto. Um, and I wish you well, and uh, thank you for helping me uh, get ready for uh, moving into the co-chair role. Thank you. And anyone else would like to speak? I think it would be repetitive in a lot of ways, but uh, any, okay. I think we'll, no one else then? Okay, uh, Ms. Kaufman Gomez. Um, yes, thank you, you're right. Policy for transportation is very, very complex. And it was a huge learning curve to just get to the position of us moving on the, the particular study that we did and then being included in the TCA, which I really uh, appreciated um, a lot more depth of knowledge to be able to share with our community, because I know that our community has missed out quite a bit on that one. It's been a pleasure also to learn from you. Uh, Andy, very, very art articulate on better understanding for me when I'm reading your emails in response to many people who have questions about where we're going with things. Um, Bruce, not only AMBAG, but we also, um, with the, the CCA, um, Water Bay Community Power, I think that that was also um, significant. Um, Aurelio, I, I wish you the best moving forward as the chair coming on. Um, and also uh, a lot of our conversations that we've had while we've been in an hour and 20 commute, coming from Watsonville to making sure that we're on time to a transportation committee meeting. Um, it's been significant there. And, you know, Donna, work, working with you up um, at the north end there with um, things that are going on and evolving in your community. Um, and I, I can go on with many of the other uh, commissioners that have been here that have been very helpful. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, it, street sweeper. It's a good thing, right? Um, and I also want to say that I've had a lot of respect for the staff who've been very patient and um, helped in, in every way that I needed to have for those resources. Luis, you've been there when I've needled you with questions, when I've had the audience of people in trying to influence one way or the other on information and wanting to get it disseminated so that I can be very, very um, articulate and understanding and um, making sure that I'm making some wise questions out there that the community has to say. Um, and again, so all of you, thank you very much for allowing to be here as a service role representing Watsonville and uh, to be able to have your, your uh, attention on what the needs are for my community that I've come from. So again, thank you very much for um, allowing me to be here and to, to working with all of you as a, as a nice team. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bodnor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to thank all of you, all the people that have been sharing all these meetings with, with me. And, and you know, what a great group to work with. I love the banter. We go back and forth. I wish Randy wasn't here so I could say goodbye to him. Derek, uh, just say, you know, Randy's always brought something to the table. And, and I love that we all came here. We were open. We were able to freely discuss. And that's really valuable today. Uh, next, I got to go to staff. You know, John had mentioned that he, uh, you know, Guy mentioned that John made the, the phone call to appoint Guy. But... I was on that committee with Cynthia and John when we selected people. And uh, I am so happy right now that we made the selection for Guy Preston because the things that he said he was gonna bring to this commission he has delivered on this latest grant is just, you know, I think the tip of the iceberg. And I think he's gonna be a great asset for Santa Cruz County moving forward. Uh, the planners, for the planners, that, uh, you know, we have some of the best planners that just keep bringing projects the hardest thing for them is that we're so divided sometimes on where we want to go that they don't get the true recognition because the project they have may not be one that people always agree with. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's it's been a great job for everything they've done. I, I think the one thing that I want to, you know, make, maybe take a moment to clarify is there's been a lot of press lately, last couple of weeks, you know, the, the studies that we do, uh, you know, the, the trail, the train, Measure D. I just, I just want to make one final comment on Measure D. You know, it, it always upset me because, you know, when we come, when we get a chance to speak, we have to be so articulate, we have to be so thoughtful, we have to be 
And as Trina would say, we have to be factual about what we say. And so many times people can come to the microphone and public comment and say anything they want, and we don't fact check it, and it's not true. And I just encourage the public to not always believe everything that comes across in public comment. So with regard to Measure D, my feeling is, is that Measure D, you know, first of all, I give John Leopold credit, he was on that commission that bought the rail trail, the greatest single decision made for Santa Cruz County. And as Andy said, we don't know what we're gonna do with it yet, but we'll figure it out. But with Measure D, you know, if you didn't vote for Measure D, it's like you almost didn't wanna vote for a cure for the coronavirus because, because Measure D was something that was had something good for everybody. So it always bothered me when certain groups would take credit for how they passed Measure D. As far as I'm concerned, Measure D should have been a 100% measure because it helped everybody. I've been a Metro rep for, for, for the whole time I've been on this commission. There was something good for everybody there and put your differences aside. Sometimes you have to take one for the team and do what's good for Santa Cruz County. So we just saw the fruits of that with this latest grant and I'm excited about that moving forward. I do wanna make one final comment because you know sometimes as commissioners, we don't get a chance to engage in conversation. It seems like most of our meetings our public comment and what people have to say to us is rarely what we get to share. And, uh, you know, I was on a, a, a committee that went back, or a committee, I actually went back with a guy you might remember, his name was George Dondero. And we went back to uh, Minnesota and tromped through the snow, which, which I think George's knees still hurt from that trip. But uh, in order to try to find somebody to run a train, and, and I gotta tell you, you know, we don't get to vote and when this TCA commission came out, one of the recent letters that came out that said that the commission that was selected to uh, analyze it that I stood on was a biased committee. And uh, I just want you to know that, that I shared this with uh, Guy Preston when I first came, you know, just for the facts, sometimes as you walk out the door, there's gotta be disclosure. I've never been in favor of the train. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, and I think uh, Chair McPherson came out last meeting and said something. So I want you to know that, that there are people that don't necessarily say something, but there's gotta be an opportunity to voice that opinion. You just can't come out and say that. Well, other than Randy, Randy said at every meeting, but that's a different personality. So I want the public to know that this commission, this body evaluates everything and they look at everything and they see a lot more than you might see. And, and it's just not about a single issue. So I commend all of you moving forward and you make decisions about what to do with that corridor. Uh, and I applaud you for your service and, and, and wish you the best of luck. And especially you, Aurelio, you're gonna be a great chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Leopold. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's hard to put the, all the words together about how I feel about my service on the Regional Transportation Commission, because when I came here 12 years ago, um, the the policy discussions uh, at the RTC were very different than they are today. Um, I called it the era of no. Um, there was one side who didn't want anything to happen to the highway and they were a very loud no. And there were the other side who wanted something happen to the, to the highway and they made sure to say no on everything else. And as a result, we went through decades of not getting anything done. Um, and in, uh, it, it was bewildering to me when I got here uh, and it started to change in 2011 when there was a series of votes uh, about uh, what was going to be our CTC request and it and it we've moved from focusing on one project to thinking about the entire transportation system and we were successful then and then the the we also started doing work on uh, building a community uh, support for the purchase of the rail line and as uh, Andy mentioned, it, it was, it, although the commission voted unanimously to, uh, to support the acquisition of that rail line, after 20 years of discussion, uh, we went to the RTC on the, uh, I mean the CTC on the very last day that we could even acquire those funds. Uh, and they were suspicious about what we wanted because for so long our commission had been um, in this era of no and, and had filled their minds with lots of things about what they wanted to do or didn't want to do or anything else. And uh, when we could come with a unanimous decision, they saw that we had finally uh, found some way to, to get an agreement. And we built a very strong coalition of labor, business, environmental groups, uh, uh, recreation, um, 
uh, transportation groups uh, to support that. And uh, it'll be a chapter in my memoirs about just the, the you know, the uh, story of acquisition of that line because it required going all over the state and fighting with Caltrans and uh, then Supervisor uh, Mark Stone and I uh, had to do some battle uh, with the Caltrans staff and leadership. Um, but the acquisition of that line actually symbolized a, a new era in uh, the uh, for this commission, because we said we weren't just committing to one thing, you know, previously just been the highway, and that we were looking at other ways uh, to move people around. And through those discussions, it led us to having a, a good soul searching discussion with this commission about how we wanted to fund it. You, you, the, those of you around remember that in 2004, uh, the RTC put a transportation measure on that failed to even get a majority, let alone two thirds. And we uh, worked very hard, this commission worked very hard um, to uh, put together uh, a measure. And I was glad to be the chair uh, uh, during uh, uh, this uh, period where we could um, uh, put together a measure that, that looked at all the different modes of transportation. And um, it was near unanimous support to put it on. I think it was only Randy that voted against it, but he, he voted for it when it came to the uh, Scotts Valley City Council. So I'll consider that unanimous support. And um, and then we went out to the public and I wanna thank um, uh, Bruce for, uh, for recognizing the work we did on the campaign of uh, I, Bruce and Don Lane, who was then a commissioner, uh, played a leadership role on the campaign committee and we had to raise an extraordinary amount of money. We had to work really hard. Everybody on the commission played a role in passing that. And I think we were successful, not only because we were uh, uh, presenting a multimodal package that I may not have been for the highway, but I wanted the, 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 the trail or the, or the pedestrian bike bridge or someone else wanted roads and someone else uh, wanted the highway nine corridor and someone else uh, wanted uh, uh, some other mode of transportation. That worked, but I also think that we were presenting a, a positive um, set of programs about what we could do. It is so easy to organize around no, um, but it's, it takes work to organize around yes, but the results are so much more positive. Um, after that, you know, our success there, and for anybody who, uh, 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 puts it down or even claims responsibility claims responsibility for passing it is is probably wrong because it really was a community-wide uh, effort and um, we did the unified corridor study again another big project um, and our staff did a great job and at the end of it we were unanimous in and talking about what we wanted to do with that that is a direct uh, result I mean that is a direct consequence of why we were successful in getting the largest grant from the CTC we ever received. And so, you know, we hear a lot uh, of uh, uh, encouragement to do, to, to do, uh, to vote no on things. And there's a lot of people, as my colleagues have pointed, who may not be as well informed, who tell us no on things. But when we say yes to things, we actually get things done. We are actually going to get things done on all of our major corridors before, because of this grant. We are actually got uh, the largest funding, transportation funding measure um, uh, for our multimodal uh, plan in history. We actually acquired this rail line uh, because we agreed. And so I wanna encourage you to not um, uh, fall to the easy position in the future of saying no to something, but really uh, doing the hard work uh, to get to yes, because we get a lot more done when we do that. I want to thank my colleagues uh, for the 12 years on on this board. The, I've had a chance to work with many of you um, on lots of important projects. And for the newer members who I haven't had the same uh, uh, term with, um, uh, I'm confident that of uh, your ability to uh, to help our community move forward on transportation. I also want to acknowledge the staff. Uh, first, George Ondero and now Guy Preston have done a great job in, in sometimes difficult circumstances, uh, but have worked creatively to try to meet the, the very needs of this commission. Uh, Guy 
clearly was the right person uh, for us to hire um, uh, just a few short years ago. Um, and he presented us in his uh, interview with a plan of how we were going to leverage this thing that we just passed, Measure D. And, um, and this grant award is a direct result of, uh, of that plan. And so I, I want to just acknowledge that hard work um, and what it takes to actually get that kind of stuff done. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, just uh, recognize uh, a couple of um, staff members. Uh, you know, uh, Rachel Marconi has been our uh, amazing uh, legislative liaison and has provided us a great deal of information and uh, support uh, for us when we're in Sacramento or Washington. Uh, for Ginger D Dicar, who, who obviously got the short straw in, in life to get both the Unified Corridor Study and the TCAA. Um, she, you know, she must have done something in a pa pa past life that gave her these two controversial projects. Uh, and I just admire her work um, in getting those things done. But uh, Sarah Christensen, who's, who's inherited trying to move us from a um, a planning agency to a, a, a operations, you know, delivery, uh, product delivery uh, agency. I really appreciate that. Grace and all the other people uh, that make up the RTC staff. Uh, it takes a lot of, of, of work behind the scenes in order to move us forward. And our staff is uh, really incredible. Uh, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm very uh, proud of the accomplishments that we've had over the last 12 years, and I'm confident that this commission will be successful in the future in helping us realize the projects of Edger D and in thinking about ways to effectively move us around in, um, in this county. Uh, there's a lot that we can do, and if we work together, we can accomplish a lot. And I just want to thank you for the kind comments, and, uh, and I look forward to uh, watching with uh, great interest as Citizen Leopold. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you all for um, um, your comments. Uh, very well received uh, and very, very uh, much deep, deeply meant by everybody who made those comments. Um, I well, don't know. Chair, if Chair, to... Chair yes, one last thing. Yes, sir. I forgot to mention Luis Mendez, uh, and I really apologize for that. He is the the um, the the detailed uh, person on this rail corridor, and we wouldn't. There are so many difficult questions that uh, that we've counted on Louise to figure out and wrestle with, and I don't know how we would uh, have done it, uh, all the work that we have on that corridor uh, without his expertise. And I, I forgot to mention that, and he's been just a treasured member of our staff. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mrs. Councilman Gomez, Ms. Botdorf, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Leopold. It's just really been great to work with you on this commission. And I don't know that we need, we could be here a long time if we opened up the public. I don't think we'll do that at this point. I know there are a lot of people who would like to thank you and they already have and they will in your your uh, respective retirement uh, parties or whatever you might be doing. So uh, I think we'll leave it at that and uh, say, and so we can move on. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, each of you for your services on uh, the uh, Santa Cruz Regional Transportation Commission. Very much appreciated. And people are going to enjoy and appreciate this for many, many years, decades to come of what you have done and laid the groundwork for us to uh, get around this county uh, a little better than we, we might have anticipated. So thank you again for everything. And I think we will now move on to item. Sure, sure. Yes. I'm sorry. We do have one comment on the uh, director's report from the public. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, Mr. Brian Peoples. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, absolutely successful. Um, really happy about the highway, the, the grant. You know, Guy came in, he's executing as he said he would do. So we're very happy. Really like it that Patrick pointed out the UCS um, execution of that was important for this grant. We actually did support it. We didn't approve, <laughs> we didn't support the, the conclusion of it or the, the final conclusion. Ed, really appreciate your comment. Um, taking you off my uh, bad Christmas list now. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, then uh, measure D, you know, I think you guys, a lot of you are saying that we claim vic uh, the 
helping support. We supported it, but just to make sure the history's there, it originally came out with $14 million for the Monterey County Chair, we want to keep this to the uh, uh, actual report from the executive director, not uh, the, not another oral communication. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, in general, we, we support it, Measure D, and we help execute it. The last thing I want to mention is um, Don Leopold, you know, yeah, thank you for your service. And I'll tell you, you really are uh, an exceptional um, politician in, in working it because you do something that I could do. You stand up, you have the public come up there and they, 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 they give you guys a hard time. All of you guys do that. And it's a very difficult job. People don't understand how difficult it is, the role that you play. So I really appreciate what you did in the sense of taking um, the taking the breadth of the public because you're in a spot that I'll be honest with you, I couldn't do that. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I thought you did uh, do that professionally as best as you could. So I just wanted to to make sure you knew that leaving that I thought that you, you know, you could do something that I personally couldn't do. I couldn't get in front of it and, and deal with that. So I appreciate that. Ed and um, Dorita as well. Thank you very much, over. Okay, thank you. And Brian, I would say uh, I couldn't do what you did have done, which is uh, engage in personal attacks and, and, uh, and anti-Semitic behavior. So uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Uh, let's uh, move on, please. Uh, we're going to move on to the, uh, the, the item number 20, the Caltrans report. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Scott Eads here. Have a few items to share with you. Uh, first, congratulations again to um, the staff and the commission uh, for the funding recommendations for CTC. That is a, a really big deal. There is a enormous amount of work that goes into these funding applications and strategizing, you know, specifically which projects to include and how to support um, the, that information with the right. Um, mix of supporting information and all, all that that takes. So really um, shout out to the commission and the staff. This is a really big deal. Um, really a testament to all your hard work. Uh, and along those lines, I just want to highlight there's a few other projects in District 5 that also received a funding recommendation. On the San Luis Obispo 46 corridor, we uh, received $7.3 million to continue the progress there um to to allow us to um continue the work that really serves freight movement that serves the central the central coast and then uh more close to santa cruz the the 156 castroville boulevard interchange uh in Mon monterey county also received a funding recommendation so those both of those are important projects that are moving forward and um, we appreciate the the commission's um the ctc's uh support for that those funding to move those forward um, also want to highlight that we're all aware of the fact that we have a diminishing funding source in, in terms of the gas tax that supports SB1 and other funding programs. And so Caltrans right now is in the process of seeking volunteers to do research on a, a road user charge program. Um, and so if, if uh, you're interested or you have constituents that are interested, um, the participants are actually eligible to receive $100 in incentives for the time that they they spent participating in the study and for the feedback they provide. It's a six month demonstration. It begins in January, 2021, and it'll go for about six months. And uh, if you're interested, you can go to caroadcharge.com and that's the, the place where you uh, can sign up. And then also just wanna highlight that as uh, you know, the, the changes and realities in COVID as in continues. Caltrans is still issuing uh, temporary permits for businesses to operate within the state highway right away. So um, you can work with our permits department on that. Um, we're trying to do what we can to allow business uses to continue um, in this current um, situation we're in. And then finally, I just wanted to highlight that uh, that Highway 1 in Santa Cruz will have intermittent ramp, ramp closures through the end of the year. Uh, it will uh, will primarily be from, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It needs to be done during the daylight hours because um, it has to do with uh, a paint and thermo striping that we're putting down, and that has to have daytime conditions to adequately cure. 
and uh, we will not be closing more than one ramp in a row. So um, we know it's disruptive, but we need to get the work done and we appreciate everybody's uh, um, ability to help us out by, by uh, dealing with a little bit of extra delay as we continue to and complete those improvements. That's all I have today. Happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Eads. I wanted to say thank you to Caltrans for its cooperation. Uh, you could please pass those uh, thanks on to Mr. Govins, our executive director um, from our uh, district, uh, that we appreciate his and yours and everybody else's work on Caltrans. I can tell you we're getting responses not only for the, the work within our counties and cities, but on the state highways too. Uh, they just wanted to get it all done at one time. They wanted to uh, do uh, uh, the highway paved and then the stripe at the same time and uh, just uh, I think 99% of the people understand and have patience about it, but it gets there. Thank you very much because it's uh, very much noticed and very much appreciated. And I just think for in general discussion, uh, my recollection is uh, Senate Bill 1, we're concerned about you know the, uh, the amount of revenue coming here as with Measure D as well. But I think in 2019-20 in Measure uh, our SD1, we got five and a half million dollars and Measure D 2.7. And I think that we're just about on the same track uh, up to date or probably up to uh, the middle of this fiscal year uh, in getting that kind of revenue coming in. But Mr. Preston knows more details on that than I do. But um, it's so very, very important to us. And I think it gives me another good time with the previous discussions that we've had to just thank the voters for uh, approving Measure D and for the legislature passing SB1. Uh, I know, Mr. Preston, is that's about right. Uh, we're on about the same track of funding resources from those um, uh, SB1 and Measure D at this point. Yeah, we haven't seen a significant hit as of yet, so we're we're pretty close to, to being flat on our um, revenue um, generation. Yeah, which in these circumstances, I think flat is good. Uh, so, are there any uh, questions from commissioners? Um, on, on the Caltrans Cal system. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Greg Caput. I'll, I'll make a comment. I uh, want to thank you, uh, Caltrans, the uh, crosswalk, pedestrian crosswalk by Watsonville High School is almost complete. We've been waiting for <laughs> probably about three years to get it done. So I want to thank you. It's 90% uh, done. They, they have some electrical work still to do. And then I guess if we could focus next on uh, um, Highway 152 and Houlihan and College Road, mm -hmm. I think we have half of the funding for uh, uh, getting that project done. And uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I could talk to your office. Uh, uh, we've applied for grants and, uh, uh, and we're trying to get it the other uh, about $900,000. Uh, to you know, have enough for the complete the project. So uh, whether or not it's possible, we can uh, spend the money we have, uh, the half over half we do have, and then uh, get part of the project done. Uh, so that in the future, if we're still waiting for the uh, additional money that we need, the price uh, doesn't go up for the whole project. <laughs> Any other comments from commissioners? Any comments from the public? We have <clears throat> one comment, Mr. Saint. Mr. Saint may not be here or muted. I'm not sure. We'll give we him a couple. Yeah, we can't hear you, Mr. Saint. Okay, I think we'll we just have to move on to item number 21, uh, the Highway 1 41st Avenue uh, SoCal right away environmental mitigation and the RTC milestone. Uh, I think Shara Christensen is going to be presenting on this. Can you hear? Me? Oh. Hi, thank you. Thanks, Chair McPherson. This is so um, can you guys hear me okay? 
I'll give him one last chance. Mr. Saint, would you have, please, for two minutes, if you have a comment? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I never got the unmute button, but I found one in the corner here. Sorry okay. about that. All right, please. Uh, yeah, just, just a very quick comment. I didn't know when I should make it, but uh, for all the congratulations, I think we got a little bit lost there. Uh, just with Mr. M Mulhern, he mentioned that this funding that was approved yesterday, um, and he mentioned the idea that it went to dedicated bus lanes. I just wanted to correct him. These are not dedicated bus lanes. These are ox lanes with cars included with buses. And that's my only comment. Um, let's make sure we get the uh, grammar correct on that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, now, Ms. Christensen, uh, please, uh, again, thank you uh, for accepting the, the uh, Interruption there, uh, I'm number 21, the Highway 1, 21st Avenue, Silk Hill, right away. Go ahead, Thank Ms. you, Pearson. Chair yeah. McPherson. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Sarah Christensen, Project Manager for the Highway Projects, and I am here today to check a few things off of our list to achieve um, the ready to list milestone for this project. So the project is the auxiliary lane to bus uh, a new bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing action. So I see you guys. Uh, um, with the RTC. Excuse me just a second. Um, you're breaking up. I don't know if uh, everybody being, maybe they all are on mute. Um, maybe we should go off the screen because it wasn't coming away uh, across clearly. That it was for me. Was anybody else having a problem with that? Yeah, Sarah, you should turn off your video maybe. Okay. Okay. Hopefully this works better. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, but we can see you. Yeah, there you and go. Maybe this will help. Okay. So you get, get to just look at me and my construction wear. There um, you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So back, to, uh, back to the item. Uh, so we are uh, working towards achieving the ready to list milestone, um, which is the RTL milestone, which is um, basically to get the project construction ready and ready to list or advertise for construction bid. And so there's two um, that are kind of combined into one uh, for this item, and that is uh, the first to amend an agreement that we have um, with the County of Santa Cruz Public Works for uh, the right-of-way uh, support services, and the second is for uh, to get authorization for a new agreement uh, with also with the County of Santa Cruz Parks Division uh, to meet the mitigation needs for the project. So the status of this project right now, we're um, we're very close to hitting the RTL milestone. We anticipate will be um, will be there within the next month or two. So um, as you recall, in 2018, we began the final design phase with the RTC as the implementing agency for the final design and right-of-way components of the project uh, and Caltrans responsible for oversight. And uh, the RTC had previous entered into an agreement with the County of Santa Cruz um, for right-of-way support services. So that's all the uh, work that's related to acquiring um, the right-of-way needs for the project. All of the right-of-way needs for this project were um, as a result of the construction of the bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing. And that bicycle pedestrian overcrossing will be owned by the county, and therefore um, the underlying property will be uh, owned by the county. And so we uh, made that decision to partner with the county to do the right-of-way acquisitions because uh, for that reason, because they're gonna ultimately own the right-of-way. So uh, today I am requesting authorization to amend this agreement that we have um, and that this amendment
amendment will allow the exchange of funds for the right of way capital for the project. So to actually purchase the easements that are required for construction. And the, uh, the amendment value is 596,310 and that includes um, the capital for a right of way. Uh, so the not to exceed uh, amount for this contract will be $646,310. And um, there's a resolution uh, for this item. I'm going to move on to the next one. So the the second um, box that I'd like to check off for um, RTL is uh, to enter into a new agreement with the county. Um, and this time it's with county parks. And uh, the reason is because the widening of the project is going to result in the removal of 71 trees of various species. And so uh, the mitigation requirements for the project are uh, to replant those trees and there's different um, ratios of replanting required for different species and different sizes of trees. But in summary, we have to replant 255 trees and 75% of those must be coastal live oaks. We, um, we've been reaching far and wide throughout the county to try to find the best um, opportunity to replant 255 trees. Uh, that's not an easy um, thing to do, <laughs> if you can imagine. So um, we looked for the most cost effective and um, ecologically uh, effective opportunity for the replanting and it came uh, came down to being at uh, the Anna Jean Cummings County Park. And that park is located up in SoCal, kind of by a high school. And so uh, the contract, which would be a new contract, uh, the value is $529,083. And that um, covers the actual, play, the actual trees to purchase the trees um, for the county park staff to do the replanting. And then also, uh, because it's required by the for the project, uh, there's some mitigation monitoring that's going to happen over five years after the um, trees are planted. And so this contract, um, talking about fiscal impacts of this item, uh, the right of way component of the project is funded by uh, the State Transportation Improvement Program, or the STIP. We have $750,000. A portion of that is going to be um, covering the right-of-way support and right-of-way capital. And then the remaining bit is going toward the off-site mitigation, which is also considered part of the right-of-way component of the project. And so um, obviously there's not enough left over to fund both of these. So um, my uh, request is also to amend the five-year uh, program and projects for the highway corridors program to add funds over um, the very fiscal years through fiscal year 24-25. And so um, with that, I will take any questions from commissioners. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We did get to hear you loud and clear. Are there any uh, questions from commissioners on uh, this project? Um, the, to amend the agreement for the right of way, the, the project that was mentioned, is there any co comments from commissioners? Um, Chair, I have a yes. question. Yes, Ms. Kaufman, go ahead. Um, you know, as all projects, we look to leverage what we can. Um, and since you have this, this um, environmental piece of it, uh, in Watsonville, we have Watsonville Wetlands Watch. And so they always contribute to, you know, what leverage we have on money we have to put together and their resources and whatnot. Do we have any opportunity for some of the leverage um, to come in with the money and the project and the time and effort, um, donations of some sort to help with, um, to facilitate what we've got going with the, um, the, the trees and the replanting? Because I know we're taking out, was about 70, we're looking about 200, over 200 trees to go in. So are we working with other local agencies that, um, really want to grab a shovel and help out and perhaps help with the funding in any sort, any possible means? Yes. 
So thank you for your question. Um, we are, so it would really be up to county parks, um, but they typically use volunteers regularly. And so the, um, the contract value is a not to exceed amount. And so if there's any savings uh, due to volunteers uh, participating in these replantings and the monitoring, then that um, would be realized by the project. Okay, does that answer your question? Is there any, are there any questions? Okay, at, um, this is an action item uh, that we need to act on. Uh, we have there. questions from the public, Commissioner McPherson. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Any kind of questions or input from the public? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ben Bernasa. Oh, yes, I, I'm back on this issue of uh, we're talking about the highway corridors, and that includes your sec segment 12 uh, that costs 40 to $50 million a mile and is mainly there for the train. If there's no train, you don't need it. And it may not be necessary to widen at that point. It's the end of the commute. And my suggestion is that you put, put that off. And in the next four years, you have $14 million budgeted for that project. Move it over to this project and get it finished earlier. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peoples. Yes, hi, Brian from Trail Now. Two things. Um, we want to continue to ask that you look for mitigation um, measures um, for when the Highway 1 construction is occurring. Um, get the coastal corridor opened up as an active, um, simple gravel trail at the minimum uh, from Watsonville to Santa Cruz Boardwalk. Um, it's a solution for our community, giving the locals a alternative during this Highway 1 construction period, which is going to be overwhelmingly painful to our community. Secondly, the other thing we are strongly advocating is um, for the highway widening near Aptos Village, rather than having the rail corridor um, go into the village, we're asking that the rail corridor remain on the ocean side of the highway, which would reduce the congestion within the village. Thank you for your time. That was the last of our comments, um, Commissioner McPherson. Thank you, thank you. Um, any other comments from the, uh, uh, the commission itself? Seeing none. Uh, I move approval of the recommended actions. Uh, I'll second. Oh, we have a second. question from Mr. Bator. <laughs> Mr. Bator. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I have a comment. Uh, since, since this will be my last bite of the apple on, on any uh, vote here, uh, as a Metro representative, I just want to say that, that this concept of bus on shoulder is where Metro needs to be. You know, there's a lot of place, pe places where people want to put Metro. This is the most preferred use for Metro, and this is a great project, and I want to commend both Guy and Sarah uh, for pushing this forward, making this a uh, project that's going to happen. But bus on shoulder is absolutely uh, the, the place that, that Metro belongs on this. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm cutting anybody off, but I would sure like to make the motion to adopt staff recommendation. On this. You can have the second. I think Ms. Kaufman Gomez has made the motion. You'll have the second. You know, I, I would like to just make a comment too about uh, the cooperative efforts uh, that have been very noticeable between uh, the RTC and Metro, uh, very much appreciated. And I think it's gonna result in better service, uh, transportation, public transportation services for everyone. Uh, okay, we have I had a question. Yes. Um, we got replacement pages, I think, for this item, and I'm not sure those are reflected in, uh, were reflected in the staff report. Uh, just like a clarification on um, whether the motion includes those, if I have, if I'm understanding what happened correctly. You're right. There was a replacement page. Um, the staff report was corrected and the resolution was corrected. And the reason for that was 
the work plan from the county was updated for the replanting. So term, uh, we were originally expecting it to be through 2025, but we went ahead and up to 2027. They're actually gonna be most likely finished in early 2027, but we, um, we typically like to end our agreements at the end of the year. So we changed it to December 31st, 2027. And the reason for that that is the five-year uh, requirement is from the point that uh, the plantings are complete and the plantings are going to happen over a period of time. And so therefore, the term of the agreement needs to extend through 2027. So I didn't have a problem with that. I just wanted to clarify that that was, uh, going, that that was incorporated in the motion. Yes, so moved. And that's in my second. Okay. <laughs> Very well. Thank you for the explanation uh, and for the questions. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? Uh, we can call the roll, please. Commissioner Brown. Aye. Commission Alternate Tim. Aye. Commissioner Kaufman Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Caput. Aye. Commission Alternate Chiffrin. Aye. Commission Alternate Mulhern? Aye. Commissioner Leopold? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Bator? Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. And Commission Alternate Lynn? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will go to item number 22 to review the items to be discussed in closed session now. Mr. Mattis, uh, would there be anything recordable or do you choose? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairperson, there may be recordable action on two of the three closed sessions today. Okay, very good. Well, we will move into closed session. We'll take a, it's now, uh, well, let's say it's 10 minutes to 11. We'll, we'll uh, reconvene at 11 o'clock, if that's okay. And I think everybody should have the link for the closed session. And I would like to announce that the next RTC meeting uh, when we will have um, a new chair, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, will be on January 14th, 2020 at 9 a.m. And I'm sure that is going to be by teleconference as well again. So uh, thank you for uh, the public for uh, joining us. And um, we will now move into closed session with the possibility of having an announcement uh, at the completion of that. So. Uh, we will move into closed session at this point and be back at 11 o'clock in 10 minutes. All right, we, um, the commission met in closed session and we came out of our closed session with two reportable items, which our council, Mr. Mattis, will report on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we'll report on two items from the closed session. Um, the two reportable items relate to items 24 and 26 in the closed session. Um, the commission with regards to item 24, the executive director's evaluation. Uh, the executive director's evaluation was completed and the um, commission's evaluation met the requirements under section 3.3 of the executive director's contract uh, for the executive director to receive the step C increase. Um, that vote by the commission was 11 to zero to complete the evaluation and to recognize the entitlement to the step C increase that is provided for in his contract. The second item is with regards to item 26, the anticipated litigation, initiation of litigation. In that instance, the commission voted uh, 10 0. Uh, Commissioner Leopold was, did not vote in that matter. Um, and the commission authorized the initiation of litigation uh, related to the um, uh, drainage damage repair uh, near milepost 4.87 on the Santa Cruz branch line and authorized the uh, commission council to file litigation in that matter. Again, that vote was 10 0. And with that, Mr. Chair, that is all of the reportable actions from closed session. Thank you very much. Okay, that is all we need to report. Um, this meeting, uh, well, the meeting of uh, November 3rd is adjourned officially then. And uh, 
The next one will be in January. I don't have that date in front of me now. 14th, January 14th. January 14th, uh, 9 a.m. and it'll be on teleconference. Happy holidays, everyone, and see you later. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.